All right, welcome back everybody for another exciting episode of the Building of the Ranch Hand. Uh, Brian Martin, the boss man, coming at you with our top shop tech, Michael Forst. Hey guys. And uh, we're on a roll, man. We got the uh, new gen suspension drop up here. We got our lift kit our stainless bumper, which we couldn't be more happy with. And for today, we're going to work up on the rooftop of the cab. We're gonna go with round bullet lights, uh, glass lenses, 30 inch long air horns to come right out uh, above the sun visor and keep that 80s cool traditional look. That's right. It's gonna be looking like this truck just rolled out of the, out of the showroom in 1988. Yep, yeah, that's the look we're after. So that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. That's right, let's do it. So I'm going to start taping out lines here for our cab lights and horns. And since we have a blank roof up here, I got another cab that I got measurements for where the lights and horns fit for reference. Obviously, you're probably going to start with a truck that has cab lights on it anyway, so you'll have those locations already set. So the first thing I need to get is a very thinner line from the front towards the rear, and I'll index everything off of that, staying parallel to a true dead center. If I went off the side of the cab here, this cab tapers getting wider at the rear so if I line it up with that my lights would actually be pointing inward towards the center so let me use this this ridge right here in the center of the roof cap they want to tape on it find the center up here until it kind of starts to vanish then I'll measure I'm gonna set my tape on that bracket and I'm just gonna put a mark at 35 inches and do the same from this side there's my 35 from that side now it's just put me a mark right in the center of it and I'll connect this line from the center of the ridge across that and that will give me a center line index. All right, now I know my first light is nine and a quarter from the center. And the next light is 25 inches from the center. And the same on this side. All right, so there's the lines that they'll be on, keeping them all parallel, facing straight center. And they gotta figure out how far they are back from the front. And from what I've measured, I'm eight inches from the front of the roof cap to the first bolt hole. So now I've got a starting point and a center line for all five lights. What I'll do is I'll get the gasket and lay up here and use that to lay out the wire hole and the rear hole. I'll just line up this center hole with the front point, get the rest of them to fall on the center line and mark these holes onto the roof. All right, so here we've got our three holes on each of the five lights. Next thing I'll do is just get a small, like a 3 drill bit and drill a pilot for each one of these three holes. The front and rear mounting hole, they'll be drilled out to a 13 30 seconds and a threaded insert put in both of those. And the wire hole will be drilled out to about a three quarter inch for the wire to pass through. I'll do that on all five, then I'll put the inserts into the necessary ones. All right, so I've got a 3 16 drill bit in here. As you can see, I got a bunch of tape wrapped around the end. That'll keep the bit from over penetrating and getting into any upholstery or anything else down below there. It's really important when you're drilling into the cab or anywhere that there's sensitive materials on the opposite side. So I've got all my holes pilot drilled. I'm going to use a 13 30 seconds. Again, I've got a stopper on here so that this drill bit doesn't over penetrate and tear up any upholstery. And I'm going to drill the front and rear holes on each of these light setups here. These will be for my threaded inserts. All right, so now I've got uh, the holes for the nut inserts to be installed into all drilled. I'm going to use the step bit to oversize the hole for the wire. These work great, especially on thin sheet metal because it's not going to catch and try to force itself through there. It'll just open this hole up about 16th inch at a time. And that's about as big a hole as I need to have for the wire to pass through there. Now I'll peel our tape off and start preparing some thread inserts to put in here. All right, so here's one of the threaded inserts that we're gonna put in here for these cab lights. There's a few ways you can install these, but the simplest and fastest thing is just to have a little steel bar with a bolt in it. This here is quarter inch in this case, and cordless impact works great. You can do it with a ratchet, a socket, or even just a wrench. 
but we'll just insert that into the hole all the way and just slowly tighten it up a little bit at a time until it feels like we're unable to turn our bar clockwise. There. So I'll do this on two of the three holes on each light. All right, so here's our chrome die cast glass lens bullet cab lights we're putting on this truck. We're gonna take this bulb out of here. It comes with an incandescent 1156 bulb. We're gonna change it out with these JML Customs 15 LED star pattern lights. These will make this light just glow. They're ultra bright and they look just killer. So to start by taking the lens retainer off of here. I'll remove the lens and the housing here. To remove this light, we're just gonna push it in and give it a little turn and pull it out. To replace it, there's our new one. Push it in and give it a little turn and it's in there. You can see these lights here have just one wire to feed the power side of the light and the ground through the housing. They intend for the power to come through the housing, through the mounting, in through the roof cap of the truck, and then to find the ground that way. That's a lot of components to go through, so I like to ensure a better ground. I'm gonna actually add a ground wire to this housing and feed it alongside this power wire because the truck will also have a power and ground to each light. I'm just gonna remove the plate from the housing. Then I'll just drill a hole in the back, get me a ring terminal and a length of wire, affix it to that, put it back together. And then when I mount this onto the truck, I'll have my power and a ground wire. Put our JML light, customs light bulb in it. And there's a gasket on the bottom side of this glass lens. I'll make sure that's in there. And a gasket will go on. And that'll have our new assembled unit. I'll do the same thing with the rest of the four. So I've got my light fixtures all prepped, got my ground wires in here, got my bulbs changed to the JML Customs bulbs. Let's take them over the truck and let's get them installed. I'm going to clean these surfaces here so my silicone has a good clean dry surface to adhere to. Seal the water outside. I'm going to put silicone sealant inside the threaded holes and even around the rim of these nut certs, the front and the back. I'm gonna put a bead around the wire hole too so nothing can creep in through this hole here. So I got my whole silicone, I got my light, my gasket ready to put on. These are the mounting bolts that'll be used to hold these down. Obviously the long one in the front and the short one in the rear. These include this nylon washer. This will seal the bolt to the housing so water can't get in around the top of the mounting hole and, and trace the bolt down through the hole. Get and fish the wire through the holes. I wanna make sure I have this long bolt threaded before I move to the rear one. I guess gets nice and centered under it. All right, so I want to tighten this down just enough. I'm compressing that gasket about a third to a half of the way. All right, so I got my two on the driver's side and come over to the passenger side at the outside and start working towards the center. It's a little easier to mount a light and then kind of work towards you than to be working over it. So I got all five of our cab lights mounted. Our wires are fed inside to the header cover. So now I go inside, remove the header cover off and attach our light wires to our factory harness inside the cab. All right, so now we're inside the truck and what we need to do is take this header cover off and get our wires that are coming through the roof cap on the cab lights and get those attached to the factory harness. So I'm gonna start by pulling this center light here out. There's a couple of screws above there and there's a screw up in each one of these visor holders and that's all I need to be able to pop this cover forward. So there's the first light, the second light, there's our center one, next one, and the outside there. Now to find our factory plugs. Like this is it right here with the yellow and white wire. I don't have the connector to match up to these. That's only going to be on a factory cab light. So what I'll do is I'll cut this connector off. I'll have a yellow and a white wire, the yellow being the positive and the white being the ground. And expose a little bit more wire so I can crimp my connector onto it. These wires in the cab may be different colors depending on the year and manufacturer of your truck. So you don't want to just count on white being ground however usual it is. Best just to take a test light and, and check it. 
But I know for a fact that uh, on this truck, the yellow's the hot and white ground. So we got all our wire connections made. Let me go ahead and use my heat gun. I'm gonna shrink this heat shrink tubing on these connectors. Once we get these all finished, I'll tuck the wires back here into the header cover. Then we'll go here and check our light function. All right, let's flip on the clearance lights and get out and take a look at them. These lights are extremely bright and really sharp and clear. Now let's go ahead and proceed with getting our roof horns mounted and get them plumbed. All right, so here's our 30 inch roof horn. It's gotta have a mount at the rear. There'll be a holder here closer to the trumpet. This is the type of base you've probably seen on the roof cap. So we'll thread these holes here and mount the horn to it. So we need to get this piece prepped, get the lines laid out on the roof and get them drilled to mount these rear bases. All right, so the two horns will fit between the outside light and the inner left and right light. So right in this area. So I'm gonna put me some tape on the roof just like I did for the lights so I can lay my lines out. Now just like before, I'm gonna find a point I can measure off of each side to find center. So I'm gonna go off that mirror bracket there, about 38 inches to about the center. So I'll measure it off this side. I've got a mark from 38 inches each side. I'll just go ahead and put me a mark right in the center of that. I'll use the back of the center of the cab light as a center line up here. Now to draw a line front to back, I'll just run a straight edge from the center of the roof cap where there's a kind of a point in the front, connecting the center cap of the roof with the line that I drew. That'll give me a straightforward center line in the roof. Taking measurements off of another cab that has roof horns on it, I determine that the horns are 33 inches apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off my center line 16 and a half inches either direction. I'll do that at the front and the back, and that will be the center line for each horn. All right, so now I've got the horn center lines drawn out. I'm gonna need to find the location for the horn pads. And going off that same example truck, I determined that 17 inches from the edge of the roof cap is the rear mounting hole for the horn pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark at 17 inches up on my horn center line on each side. And then I will use the horn pad itself, lining up the rear hole with my mark I made to mark the front hole and the hole for the airline to pass through. All right, so now we're ready to drill holes for the mounts and the airline. Once again, I'm getting my 3 16 drill bit with a stopper on it so I don't over drill. There's the hole for the airline. Now the rivets I'm gonna to use to attach this pad are 3 16 so I don't need to go any further with this front and rear hole. However, the one for the airline hole, I'm gonna take that out to about a half an inch, enough room for my quarter inch airline to be able to fit through there and feed to the front of the truck. All right, so there's all my holes. Airline will feed through there nicely. Now I can go over to the driver's side and drill those ones. So my holes drilled, I go ahead and remove the tape from this area, put down a gasket and some silicone and rivet down the base. All right, so I've got a base mounted. I'm gonna go ahead and just temporarily mount this horn so I can lay out the front holes. I'm gonna lay it in place here with a couple of screws under it. All right, so here's our front pedestal mount attached to one of the bases. I'm just gonna, again, just kind of fit this thing over here, find a spot where it wants to sit. And I'm not gonna drill anything for this one yet. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the other horn and then mount the pedestal for it. Then I'll compare it to the driver's side and make sure that I get them in the exact same spot. Probably just gonna measure from this base to that base. That's at 16 and three quarter to the bolt hole. This one. Also a 16 and three quarter. Okay, so that's a good spot. So I can't get right down through that hole. I'm gonna just kind of trace the base out on here. Then I'll remove the horn and remove this base, put the base back down so I can get my marker right down through the hole. Okay, now I'll take it back apart and transfer all my holes over. All right, there's my two holes I'll need to drill for the front base from this side. Now I'll go ahead and drill those, put a gasket on and some silicone on there and get those mounted.
wire. So these horns have got a quarter inch airline quick connect built up inside of them. So what I'm gonna do is just plug my line right into that fitting, get a tug, make sure it's attached, and then feed this end through here. And this is inside that channel in the roof. So I don't have to worry about it being poking around inside the headliner. All I can do is make sure it's going forward and it's actually gonna follow that channel right to where I need to go. Get this put it in there. Two mounting bolts in the rear. I can tighten these down because this is to be the last time I have to mess with it up here. All right, let's go do the other one. I'll just clean the roof up and we'll be done up here. Then we'll go inside the cab and get our lines plumbed together and fed to the pull cord valve. All right, so fed our lines through the roof. Okay, this is the line here that's coming from the valve down to the firewall. And I've got another one here. Yeah, this one here is the one that got ran down the channel from our horn. So I gotta be able to do is connect this line, the one coming from that horn down to this port on the valve here. All right, so here's a T fitting that I'm gonna connect both ends of the horns to it. They're gonna come in from the sides and our line coming from that pull cord valve is gonna come into the center. That way our air gets equally split going to each horn. If I'd have done it coming in this side, I'll have more air pressure going out to whatever horn is fed off this one and not much to this side here. So I'll cut these lines and attach that to our port there. And let's connect that one to that. Now I'll give it a little test pull. There, that works just like we need to. Now I can feed all our wires back up in here, get everything tucked up in place, put our header cover back on, and we'll be good to go. All right, so now we've got our horns mounted, we've got them plumbed to the pull cord valve, got our insulation put back in, the header cover back on. Now let's go outside and get a look at them. Looks good and sounds good.